During this global pandemic and era of social distancing, I spoke with Eric from our studios in Washington, D.C. He's the medical director and president of two dermatology practices in neighboring Maryland. So talk to me about how all of this kind of came about. Yeah, well, I did work in the lab full time for about six years doing molecular biology and actually working on viruses. That was a long time ago. But when um, COVID started spreading around the world, I started reading about the coronavirus. And I thought, well, it's only a matter of time. It's coming here. What am I going to do if, if and when I catch this? So I found that the coronavirus, that a lot of common colds are caused by the coronavirus. And then I found this whole literature treating the common cold with zinc lozenges. And then before I had too much time to think about this whole thing, I caught COVID. This is back in March of last year. And I got very sick that first day. I had the, I had the muscle pain and fever that was just unheard of. I'd never, never had it before. And I knew that the symptoms were so weird and so intense, I'm like this is COVID. I started taking the zinc immediately, every couple hours. I had had previous experience with nipping colds in the bud over the last few years, taking specifically not a zinc pill, but a zinc lozenge. And for me, it had always sort of shut the cold down. Um, well. This really helped such that after two days, I was no longer febrile. I didn't have a fever. Now, it still took a while. I mean, it took me a week before I'm up and about, and I was still tired for quite for weeks. It took a while to totally recover. But after that, I started treating people with this. Can I stop you there? Because I, I want to get to that part. But, but what I find interesting is, is a feature of this story that you were taking zinc, your partner also had it, but was not interested in taking zinc. So you almost had that randomized test in a way. One's taking it, the other's not. You're seeing, so describe what you saw. Well, um, it doesn't necessarily taste so good, zinc. And so, and I had no real data about the zinc and she wasn't uh, very sick. So she wasn't really taking much, but then by day seven, Eight, she started to get the bad cough and the chest pressure where you feel like someone's standing on your chest. And this is just not something that's normal that you see with anything else, any other bug, where you feel you can't breathe and you can't get a breath. So I pushed it, she started taking the zinc, and I saw in the course of one day, during that day, the shortness of breath basically went away. I, I nipped it in the bud with zinc every two hours. Same thing with this chest tightness. And um, I was lucky, I never got to experience that, but I started the zinc immediately, as soon as I thought I had the COVID. So that really convinced me because I saw her getting worse. And I was very worried about the next step, which is the hospital. And back a year ago, the hospital was pretty, pretty grim in terms of, you went into the hospital with COVID, the numbers were pretty poor because we just had no experience in treating it. Eric is a derma surgeon with a PhD in biochemistry. He's also written more than 20 research publications. So you had now two examples, uh, yours uh, and a second, example of like somebody in a heightened state also seeing results. So now I guess this is the point where you're like, hey, now I should probably go out there, start helping people. Talk to us about that process. Yes. Yeah, so um, I just started spreading the word to my colleagues that, um, you know, if you know anybody has COVID, I'm willing to treat them by phone. And I, I think we've got something that works. I started treating people. And each one was improving. And at an average of two days after I started the high-dose sink. And 
my third patient was very short of breath. She had a fever of 102. She wasn't doing well at all. And within two days, she said, she texted me and said, I feel so much better. I can't believe this. And she was definitely going downhill. And, and then I started, uh, I reached out. I started working with my colleague, Dr. Alan Harrington. Uh, and together, we started treating many more patients. And just by word of mouth. And either we would get them the zinc or we'd tell them we'd get them on the right protocol, the regimen. The regimen was very different from just taking it as a vitamin. Nothing to do with that. It's high dose, frequent dose, and it has to be a lozenge. It has to go where the virus is replicating, which is up here, your nose, your throat, and your airways. And uh, to me, that was kind of obvious because working as a dermatologist, you know, if you have a skin problem, you take a cream and you put it on the skin. You don't necessarily have to take a pill. You can treat many things just with topicals. Same thing if you have an eye infection, you put drops in your eyes. So I thought, okay, this is important. Get the zinc where it needs to go, which is in your whole throat, the upper airway. And by this time I had read all these papers showing what zinc did in terms of inhibiting the virus. So I became more convinced by the basic science. Nearly a year after the global COVID-19 pandemic started, the issue of mutations looms large. New variants capable of spreading faster are emerging and leading to questions about whether they will make the newly approved vaccines less effective. I keep thinking about what you're talking about because obviously viruses mutate and that's the problem with the flu. You think that it's this strain of the flu, but it could be something else. So give us your vision of what we're looking at long term, because like you said, we could be vaccinated, but a year from now, we'd probably have to get a different booster because it's a different kind of variant, right? Right. Well, I agree, Mike. I, th I think we're this is going to be with us for some time and we will need uh, boosters and we will need ongoing new vaccines to keep up with it, and we will need to reduce the infection rate. And, and, and part of that will be about keeping people well by whatever means, and we will need therapeutics so that somebody who gets sick on the outside can stop it so before they get a whole bunch of people sick because they're getting so ill. Um, so this is all going to be very important to find something that not just treats, but another key question is, and we don't know the answer to this, but this is an important question. It's a feasible study to do. Um, and if it reduced the infection rate, that would be amazing. Now, we're, we're currently working on... Um, We've been looking at families, Dr. Harrington and I, where um, one or two members of the family catch COVID. Then the other members of the family aren't sick yet, but they've been exposed. You know, they're eating dinners, lunch, all the meals together. So we know that this virus is so contagious. So if you spend two, three hours at the dinner table with your loved ones every day, and now they have COVID, Okay, your chances of getting it are very high. So we have been treating the, ex high, the exposed people who aren't sick with high dose zinc. And so far, they're not getting sick. Now we didn't give them just one little zinc pill a day. No, we gave them the full regimen that we're treating the sick people to try to shut down the virus. And a few days later and a week later, they're still testing negative for the virus. They're living in the same house. They have been exposed. That's as high risk as you get indoors with loved ones. I mean, imagine, you, you know, it's your spouse, you're sharing the bed. I mean, you're not going to get a higher risk exposure. So again, this needs to be studied and um, simple doesn't mean it's not true. <laughs> Experts believe in the future a COVID-19 vaccine booster will be the norm. 
just like the annual flu shot. Boosters will help prevent infections from expected coronavirus mutations. You know, I've even heard uh, people from Johnson & Johnson officials there saying like, look, you may get used to having a booster shot every year. I mean, this could be the long haul, huh? Absolutely, absolutely. I could see that as uh, the infection rate continues across the world, because it's gonna take a long time, could take two, three, four years before the whole world gets vaccinated. By that time, some of the variants may be resistant to some of the vaccines. So uh, you really have to try not just one thing. So the vaccines are obviously the most important thing, but we need therapeutics because um, even if you look at this country, we have access to the biggest resources and yet so few people have been vaccinated yet. And what about the people who are still getting sick? So we need something to keep people out of the hospital right now, something they can take as an outpatient. And Eric believes that zinc throat lozenges. He and his colleague, Dr. Alan Harrington, recently published a study which included results of their own review of treating COVID patients with zinc. And yet zinc is something that, that you can get your hands on, but it doesn't seem to be getting the press. No. No, and I think because it uh, appears to be too simple. Yeah. But it's actually not simple. All you have to do is Google on PubMed zinc and viruses, and you'll find so many articles. There's so much molecular biology and biochemistry published on zinc, and you'll see that it is vital for our immune system, and it helps in so many different ways, but um, it, it needs to have a randomized controlled trial, and then I think people would believe it. And what are the advantages of it? Well, the vaccine is obviously the holy grail, but you know what? It's gonna take a couple of years, if not more, to get the whole world vaccinated. In the meantime, the virus keeps spreading and mutating, and some of the vaccines we have now are not gonna work a few years from now. So they might be working now, but in two years, there'll be a different version of the virus. So we need vaccines, but we also need therapeutics. And we need something that's inexpensive. So in the third world, we're talking two, three billion people. They're not going to be able to afford a drug that costs $3,000 a shot. It's impossible. Zinc is very inexpensive. So this could potentially treat a much larger group of people. And the key thing there is we need to keep the infection rate down, which means we need to treat. Because if we let the third world get infected, it's gonna grow some new mutants in these viruses, which are gonna come back and hit the first world. So uh, we don't have a choice. We, we need to come up with better therapeutics the vaccine is the way to go, but it's not the only way. We need to, it's, it's, it's a war, and we need to fight it on multiple fronts. And it's good for long haulers too, you say? I, I, so far, we've treated a few successfully. It, it remains to be seen if it can help more of them, but that needs to be studied as well, because what's the downside of two weeks of zinc? Yeah, it might upset your stomach a little bit. It's very inexpensive. What's the worst that happens? It doesn't work. It won't hurt you for two weeks. Now, I wouldn't take a high dose for a long period of time. That's not good for you. But for a couple of weeks, it's fine. And you would know within a few days if it's helping you. If you're a long hauler, you'll find out. You've had these symptoms for months. So you will know within a couple of days, is this thing helping me or not? I find it disappointing that we've had this for a long time and yes, I believe uh, relatively little has been invested in therapeutics. Everything was pushed on vaccine, vaccine, vaccine. But it's clear it's not so easy to vaccinate the whole world. This is a logistical problem that's very difficult. In, in medicine, your best bet is to triangulate whatever the problem is. So if you have one treatment over here or one thing that helps prevent it, great. 
then you have something over here that helps treat it. Great. Then if you come at it from a different angle, something else. So the more uh, potential ways you can really mitigate this virus, better off you are. And this needs to be investigated. Prove me wrong. Thanks so much. Thank you.